I'm going to do a little uh, review on this Honda. This is a 2008 uh, CRF 230L. I've had this bike for oh, a little over six months, 1100 miles. And uh, just going to kind of give my opinion on the little bike. We'll do some pros and cons, and what have you. It'll take us a little ride here. Pretty fast to get going. It's not cold collared at all. I can't say so much about that Kawasaki Vulcan sitting in there. My very first moto vlog. I'm not sure how the sound quality and all that's going to come out, so if I think it's acceptable, well, you'll be watching this. thousand five hundred and seventy five miles on the bike it had about four hundred miles on it when I bought it the old boy that had the bike they had bought it new and shortly after he had purchased the bike it's a 2008 But it had sat on the showroom for quite a while, actually, so I was told. And uh, after he'd had it for a while, he decided he wanted the new 250 that had come out. So he traded in and got a Honda CRF 250L. And I got a pretty good buy on it. To go down through some pros and cons of this bike a little bit about my history with bikes I started riding I got my first dirt bike when I was nine years old it was a little Honda 80 cc four stroke strictly dirt bike it was my first motorcycle had many many dirt bikes and a few street bikes since then I'm 39 years old now and I have not been riding my whole life that's about 20 years there that I did not ride of course I had a had a son who's 19 now and uh, life kind of took priority getting him grown I just recently got back into riding again back on the road off-road I off-road this thing quite a bit when I can but uh, I like street riding too my favorite type of riding it's just like what we're doing right now, these little country back roads. I love to go explore. And I live in a very nice part of Tennessee. There's lots and lots and lots of good back roads to just go and ride them. I and you could spend an entire day just riding little old back roads. And that, my friends, brings me to the beginning of the pros for a 230L. The number one pro to this bike, in my opinion, is it handles like a dream. Now I had 
a 2015 model Honda CB300F, the naked bike. And it handled wonderfully. But it lacked the traction that this bike has got. Uh, the CB300 was extremely, extremely stiff riding bike. Very stiff suspension. This thing just floats down the road. It is wonderful. Now, I'm, I'm a little scrawny guy. I'm 5'10", 155 pounds. So my body weight don't compress the suspension a whole lot. But with these truly all-terrain tires, they grip like mad. And you can come around a corner and if you hit a little loose gravel, it doesn't try to get out from under you like some of those street bikes do. And 300 tried to get out from under me twice. In my years of riding dirt bikes and off-road and stuff, I kind of managed to save it both times, but this one here, it's, you know, you still have to be careful. You can't just go balls to the wall around a corner, but, you know, you could take corners really quick in this thing. Not really worry too much about it. There's a good one right there with that gravel shit in the road. See, it just went right on through it. No drama. So that is definitely the number one pro with me on this bike is being able to get out and ride these little country roads. Pro number two is because it's a dual sport. If I decide, if I'm on the farm, I'm nowhere near the farm right now, but I do ride out to the family farm, about 16, 1,700 acres. And if I'm riding through the farm and pass our green bins and decide I want to go out through the field, well, I just take off through the field. So there's another obvious pro of dual sport bikes. Pro number three, if you're starting out riding, These things are incredibly lightweight. I mean, like literally a 12 year old girl could stand the thing back up if it fell over. To me, that's a big advantage, especially if you're a new rider. More slick gravel on the road. So that's, you know, that's something to think about. If you lay the sucker down, you gotta pick it back up. Don't buy a bike you can't pick back up. Just about anybody can pick one of these things up. And pro number four, well, I can't really call this a pro. I, I, I was gonna talk about the fuel economy, but let's face the facts. Um, pretty much any motorcycle gets good fuel economy. Now this one is extremely, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it varies highly on fuel economy between in town riding back roads or just flat out with the throttle pinned back trying to do 75 on the four lane you notice i said trying to do 75 on the four lane um, row number five is Many, many motorcycles are very easy to maintain. A dual sport is very, very easy to maintain. It's, it's high enough off the ground, you can drain the oil in it, you can reach, you know, everything's just within easy reach. I mean, the spark plug literally just hangs out the side. You don't have to take no tanks off or nothing like that. My Kawasaki Vulcan 500, you gotta take the fuel tank off to change spark plugs. Uh, you know, it's just, it's it's incredibly incredibly simple to work on very very low maintenance so yeah I mean it, you know that's if you, if you want to save yourself a crap ton of money ooh, what has happened here how about that oh boy I knew that was gonna be real but if you want to save yourself a lot of money, change your own oil, change your own sprockets, chains, 
all that mess. Uh, dual sport's definitely a good one to, to work on, easy to work on. And I'm going to end this pro and lead right into the cons, and it's going to be the same thing. A pro is a 13 tooth front sprocket from the factory, which is awesome off road. The first gear is like a, ooh, lots of gravel on that corner. That's why. Huh. Mud, well, gravel, sand. No big deal. Gotta love dual sports. Gotta love these things. Uh, anyway, uh, a 13 tooth front sprocket is a pro and a con. If you off road, that's like a turtle first gear. I mean, it just, you can creep and crawl. It's awesome. But. It also makes first gear just about useless around town. And most of the time I'd start off in second gear, which actually caused it to kind of bog a little bit. Put a steep corner. How about that? I'm gonna drop down two gears coming out of that. I shouldn't have done that. Um, yeah, it's just not real streetable. You know, it's not a really a good usable first gear. Unless you live in like San Francisco and you guys take off starting uphill or something a lot. But, uh, yeah, it's. So, pro is off road, con leads right into street riding on a 13 tooth sprocket. So, I changed this out to a 15 tooth. And if you buy one of these, or if you have one of these, and you want it to be much more usable first gear on the street, I will tell you, you do not have to change your chain. Change your chain. Uh, factory chain works just fine. Proper length and all. We're gonna kick up this little road right here. That's a bad spot to come out on. Yeah, she's slow. Of course, I'm going uphill too. It does do 60. We'll just we'll pin our ears back. I'll give you a speed check here. This is about well, this is about all she's got, about 65. She'll edge up to 70. But about 65 is where she's happy. And that's just it hits that point. That's just where she's at. We're gonna back off here, so I don't want to go that fast all the time. Um, so that leaves me to con number two. That worked out perfect. Con number two, speed, or should I say the lack thereof. Uh, a little 230 is awesome to about 40 mile an hour. Awesome. I mean, in town, off the line, you know, I leave cars behind me all the time. Up to 40 mile an hour. And our speed limit to most of our town is 40 miles an hour. So, I mean, you know, stop light to stop light, it's freaking awesome. Off-road is awesome. A 230 has got plenty, plenty of power. Now, if you're, you know, a veteran rider, you've been riding off-road bikes for constantly for years and years and years. Yeah, you're gonna think it's kind of weak. But I mean, for just pure enjoyment, it'll do anything you want it to do off-road, and it's so lightweight. Oh my God, it's so lightweight. I think the total bike, even after I put the windshield and bags and crap in it. You know, the tow bike weighs like freaking 280 pounds. Just loaded down. I mean, it tank, the gas and all. It's just awesome. It's, it, it's so nimble. But the con is the power on the road. Um, you know, it, it'll run all day long. 55, 60, 65. It won't pull a steep hill at 65. You'll back off to about 60 going up a long steep hill with the 15 2 front sprocket. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, it could, you can't have your cake and eat it too. I'd like to have it, the 300cc fuel injected motor out of the CB300 in this little 230 frame. That would be an awesome machine. Nice blinkers.
anyway, uh, con number, what am I on, three, four, I don't know, anyway, another con, um, watching that deer there on the side, he was trying to, I wasn't sure if that deer was going to, what are you doing, car? See, people are just stupid. Anyway. <laughs> you gotta watch these You gotta watch people. You just, you don't, I was, I don't know if the camera picked it up or not. I already had my hand on the brake, my foot on the brake. I was ready. I was watching them. You just, I never assume that they're gonna stop. I never assume that they're gonna stop. But uh, really my only other con with this bike has to do with the phrase of it being lightweight. <laughs> it, let me explain. The lighter the bike, the more the wind's gonna toss you. Uh, today I'm getting some bad, strong side wind uh, gusts coming off the sides. And uh, it kinda shoves you around a little bit. So that's, you know, if you're in an area that's notoriously windy, that's something to think about, I guess. I, I ain't worried about it. I mean, the wind shakes you, and you go woogity woogity, and then you're back up to being straight. So just relax. Don't tense up. Just be like a rag doll. You know, keep control of it, but don't freak out. The wind's going to blow you around a little. And I'm talking as if you're watching this and have never rode on the street before. Because I never know who's viewing what. But yeah, the wind, uh, my Kawasaki's lightweight too. It's about 300 and, no, I don't know. Y'all have to look it up on the internet. Kawasaki Vulcan 500. I think it's like 385, 400 pounds, somewhere right in there. It's pretty light for a bike. Um, certainly no featherweight like this, but, I mean, it's pretty light for a bike. And even on that Vulcan, I mean, it shoves me around pretty good. Now, a big old V-Star, um, it wasn't as bad. It's, it was the Silverado, had the windshield and the bags and all kinds of shit. And uh, it wasn't as bad. You could still blow it around some too. But that's that's kind of really my only other con is the wind. It, it'll kind of, it'll wiggle you a little bit. Nobody's asked me and I don't care look talk about beginner bikes you know what you want if you want a street bike get a street bike if you don't know what you want I would strongly advise starting on a dual sport the riding position is extremely neutral very 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 comfortable I don't give a shit what they say about riding hey I've had sport bikes I've had cruisers I've still got a cruiser. An enduro is every bit as comfortable. Agent for, I mean, my opinion, of course. Like I said, I'm just a little normal average guy. 5, 10, 155 pounds, and I can ride a dual sport all freaking day long and be comfortable. Um, my scrawny ass may go numb in this hard seat, but that's fixable. But yeah, I mean, to start off on a dual sport, and there's there's a reason behind this also. If, if at all possible, buy a used one first of all. You know, if you want something that's good for a while, buy you. You can't go wrong. Suzuki, Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha. You can't go wrong. They're all going to be good. Buy you, a, buy you a little dual sport and you know I think you'd be surprised how much you're going to enjoy it even the bigger dual sports are, are don't get a like, 
I have to watch what I say. I, I wouldn't recommend starting off on like a 650. Not because of the motor size, not because of the power, but because of the weight and the handling characteristics. God, I love this bike. I can stay on this thing all day long. Sometimes I wonder why I have so many. I got a little scooter and that cruiser and this. This thing is just, it's hard to get off of this bike. It, that, that says a lot right there. And that's why I'm trying to say, you know, if you're not sure what you want, get a dual sport. Because this is one of the bikes that it's just hard to get off of. I mean, you can ride the thing for three hours and you're like, damn, I'm already back home. You know, it's just amazing. They're just so comfortable to ride. But you know, start off on a dual sport. You know, if you want to start off on a cruiser, more power to you. If that's what you, you know, buy what you want. But if you're not sure what you want, start off on a dual sport. They're very forgiving. Everybody like, I don't like the word flickable. I just don't like that word. But that's what everybody wants to use. Hey, this is flickable. I just I have issues with that word. But if you want to talk about flickable, buddy, that one right there is it. You know, how fast can you change from side to side? Guess what? I can change from side to side real quick. Anybody can on a dual sport. I know there are some lightweight sport bikes, like the Ninjas or whatever. Hey, I've rode the Ninjas, I rode CBRs, I have not rode any of the Yamahas. This will still outhandle them as far as how quick it can change directions. Granted, it can't do it at higher speed. I'm gonna shut up now. I've gave my opinions for what it's worth. Yes, I was taking a corner with one hand. Whoop de doo. I'm in a subdivision. 